Hello and welcome to the section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. In this section we're going to begin to talk about maximum power transfer. Maximum power transfer. And as the title sounds, it's kind of important because, you know, when you think about it, when you boil most circuits down, usually what you're trying to do is take power from your battery source or your wall socket or whatever your power source is, and you're really usually trying to deliver that power to a load, right? So usually when we design circuits, we have, you know, one part of the circuit that's sort of the, the beginning part and you have a load or something that you're trying to power or ultimately trying to interface with. And you're trying to interface and deliver power to that. So for instance, if you have a light bulb circuit as a simple example, you're trying to deliver power to the light bulb. You're trying to transfer power from the source to the light bulb. That's your goal, right? Uh, if you have a motor or any kind of electric engine or something, you're trying to deliver power efficiently from the power source, the battery or whatever it is, to the motors, right? And if you have excessive losses along the way, then you're just wasting power. You want to deliver as much power as possible to the load, right? Uh, another example might be any kind of a trans transmitter, like a radio transmitter or a cell phone transmitter, any kind of wireless device. That's actually extremely important, especially in a mobile device. You want to deliver as much power as possible from that tiny battery you have in your phone to the transmitter efficiently. You don't want to waste power, you want maximum power transfer so that, you know, because you, you have these little battery powered devices, you want them to last a long time. So all of the energy from the battery that's needed to send the waves out and talk to the towers, you want it to efficiently get to your transmitter, right? So that's maximum power transfer. And what you want to do is, is understand the basic idea in this section at a most basic fundamental level, what this is all about because remember, right now we're talking about resistors and we're talking about voltage sources and current sources, but eventually we'll start talking about capacitors and inductors and alternating current and, and more advanced circuits even later down the road with, with transmission lines and waves and things like that. And so all of these ideas with maximum power transfer will be directly extensible and applicable to those types of circuits. So what you learn here is something that we'll build on as we learn more complicated circuits. So first, let's draw a quick picture, because pictures are good uh, to, to sort of illustrate what we have. So what we have, you know, I'm going to draw a little black box. You don't know what's really inside the box, but I'm telling you inside the box we have a circuit. Now this circuit in here is any combination of voltage sources, uh, resistors, you know, so far we've only talked about them, but in the future we'll have capacitors, inductors, transformers, and other things in here too. So for right now we've got these circuits that we've been dealing with today, and let's say coming out of this circuit we have two terminals, uh, let me go ahead and move this one down just a little bit, we'll have two terminals like this, and we'll call this one A, and we'll call this one B. Now ultimately, pretty much every load that we're going to care about can be modeled as a resistor. So we're going to call it R load. So for instance, if you have a light bulb connected between terminals A and B, like if you're building a flashlight circuit or something like this, then that light bulb has a resistance, right? So we model it as a resistor, even though it's a light bulb, right? Because it has resistance. Later on, you'll find out that pretty much anything that you can think of that you're gonna hook up to a circuit can be modeled as resistors, and then later on, you'll learn capacitors and inductors. Um, pretty much anything, motors, you know, whatever you want to hook up to it. You can pretty much model it as some kind of a simplified load, even though that may not be what it is. So for now, for the loads that we're going to consider in this section, we're going to talk about resistive loads because that's what we've talked about so far.